money, power, bacon. I'm Kevin. Let me be your guide to ultimate bacon success. As a certified bacon life coach, there are few people in America as passionate about the art of bacon as I am. This gentleman to my right, I'm slightly embarrassed to say, is one of those people. He is Rob Levitt, the owner of The Butcher and Larder at Local Foods here in Chicago, one of our country's best butcher shops. Rob, if you're gonna show us how to make bacon at home, what do we need to make bacon? Okay, first thing, great bacon starts with a great pig. And this is a beautiful pork belly from La Prior Farm in Ottawa, Illinois. It's a uh, pastured duroc. Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. We believe that bacon is meant to be fatty, but we also want there to be a nice balance. So like about 60, 40 fat to lean meat, would you say? Yeah, roughly. So step one, go to your local butcher shop, support those guys, and ask for a nice piece of pork belly. Absolutely. Step two, we're gonna be curing the bacon here. Kosher salt, brown sugar, red pepper, hot red pepper, coarse ground black pepper, and finally, some cracked fennel seed. Is there a specific ratio of uh, these spices to, to use? There is. The only one that's important to me is the salt and the brown sugar. We do uh, two parts salt, one part brown sugar, two to one. The main thing with this cure is that everything complements the pork, but it doesn't overpower it. So between that and the smoke, you wind up getting something that tastes a lot like pork, but also really nicely flavored. I like to start by just take a handful and put it in the bottom of the container. All right and then I put the skin side down. I like to leave the skin on the bacon because after, after it's smoked, it peels right off, and then you can throw that in a pot of beans or a pot of greens or something like that, and you have this wonderful smoky, porky thing. You wanna get all the surfaces rubbed down and coated nicely. It just needs to be nicely coated on all sides. If you overcure, it, it can get too salty, which is like the main offender. Overcured products tend to have kind of a rubbery texture, and this will sit like this in the refrigerator for about eight days. Eight days? Mm -hmm. Seriously? Eight days. Oh my God. Can this sit uncovered in your fridge? I would say that if you're doing this at home, it's best to cover it. Um, because there's so much fat in a pork belly, fat will pick up all the other smells. So a lot of my customers will get, like if they just want to do a small piece of bacon, they'll get a piece about this big and they'll put it in a Ziploc bag. That's a good tip. Yeah. Okay, here we are eight days later. I've been camping out here at the back of uh, the butcher's shop. Uh, I didn't change clothes, neither has Rob, but we now have bacon that's been cured. You can eat this as is, you can slice it, fry it up, and it'll taste good. It just won't taste like bacon. It won't be the bacon you're familiar with. When you, when you cook it like this, it's called green bacon. Some people do that, some people who don't have the ability to, to smoke. But if you want it to really be bacon that we all know and love, you need to get some smoke on it. So we're gonna be smoking this, but what we've done beforehand is we've rinsed this for about 20 minutes under cold water to get all the extra curing spices out. And also you've let this sit overnight on this tray, uncovered in the fridge. Yeah, that's a very important step. It's called, it, it forms what's called a pellicle. It, you can feel it's a little bit sticky. And what that does is it, it helps all the smoke really adhere to the bacon. So you get a nice coating of smoke flavor on the outside. Okay, so we're gonna smoke this. Yes, sir. Okay. And now it's time to turn mere pork belly into magical, beautiful bacon. So what do we have here? So this is how we set it up as a very basic smoker. So you have a small pile of charcoal that goes on the bottom, and then we put a little foil pan of wood chips on top. So we put that all the way off to one side, and then we put our grill grate on top. And then I like to put another little foil pan of ice right over on top of the, on top of the chips. The ice helps regulate the temperature. Um, you want to keep the internal temperature of your grill around 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It just helps keep it from getting too hot too fast. You don't want a raging fire going no, on on the inside? We're not grilling our bacon, we are smoking our bacon. Okay. We're gonna put that right on top. And you notice we have this offset. The fire is gonna burn on this side. The pan of ice is gonna help diffuse that smoke a little bit. And it's gonna sort of fill the whole thing almost conduction style with, with smoke. And the best thing you can do though is to get a probe thermometer. You put it in the, in the meatiest part of the bacon, you want to set an alarm for about 140 degrees, and 145 is when you pull it out and let it rest. And that takes about two to three hours roughly. Roughly, yeah. Okay, so this is how you do this at home, but since we work at one of the country's best butcher shops, we have a professional Maserati of smokers here. Yes, okay. And, and there Martini. is bacon, we've been waiting eight days actually nine days, nine days. To, uh, to make this bacon. And finally, we're gonna have the finished product. And this is the finished product right here. Yes, sir. We got these nifty little bacon hangers that we hang them on. 
So you see, it isn't that difficult. All you need is a good piece of pork belly from your local butcher, the right amount of spices for curing, nine days, a decent smoker, and you too can have bacon, just like the bacon at Butcher and Larder at Local Foods in Chicago. Rob, thank you so much. Let's eat some bacon. Let's eat some bacon. All right.